Hi again. In Kenneth Scott Lateratus History of Christianity, page 250, Lateratus is dealing with Christianity and language, also Christianity and art. A phase of the influence of Christianity, although only in part in contrast with the culture in which the faith was set, was its effects on language. This was seen in a variety of ways. One which was little short of revolutionary was the new meaning which Christianity gave to certain words, some of them in familiar use. In attempts to express their deepest convictions and central beliefs, Christians sometimes coined new terms. Often, however, they took over existing words such as Deus in Latin and Theos in Greek, the words for God, and endeavored to fill them with distinctively Christian content. They were not entirely successful, for many of the terms carried over with them to those who employed them something of their pre-Christian and even anti-Christian connotations. Yet in varying degrees, Christians gave peculiarly Christian meanings to the words which they adopted. In some regions, Christianity assisted in the spread of a language or creating for it a literary form. In Asia Minor, in Asia Minor, rather, Christianity was probably responsible for the supplanting of the numerous local tongues by Greek, and in Gaul, that is, modern France, the disappearance of the Celtic vernacular and the triumph of Latin seems to have been closely associated with the spread of Christianity. Yet in Armenia, the golden age of native literature came through the translation and composition of Christian books through an alphabet formed for that purpose. In Egypt, it was the successful effort to provide the masses of the population with a literature and the speech of everyday life which halted the exclusive use of the alien Greek for the written page and which stimulated the development of an alphabet which could be quickly and easily learned by the multitude in place of the ancient hieroglyphics which could be the property only of the few. Through this medium, Coptic Christian literature came into being, largely the work of monks. Its major creative period was in the latter part of the 4th and in the 5th century. Similarly, the use of Syriac in literature, which had been cramped by the spread of Greek through the Hellenizing of Syria after the conquest of Alexander the Great, was stimulated by the conversion of Syriac-speaking peoples to the Christian faith. The flowering of Syriac literature went hand in hand with the spread of Christianity among those for whom Syriac was the vernacular and was a concomitant to the effort to make Christian literature accessible to the rank and file. Gothic was first given a written form, so far as we know, by the Christian missionary Ulfilas, and the Georgians owed at least two alphabets to Christians. Christianity and Art the effect of Christianity upon art was not immediately revolutionary or startling, either negatively or positively. To be sure, under the influence of the faith, the construction of pagan temples and the making of images of the gods ceased, and some temples were destroyed. However, it was not until after the first five centuries that distinctively Christian forms of art and architecture began to be prominent. Long before the year 500, Paintings inspired by the Christian faith had begun to appear, and a few surviving specimens can still be seen, notably in the catacombs. The catacombs themselves represented a modification in funeral customs. Christians disapproved of cremation, the form of disposing of the dead normally followed by pagans, and held that the body should be buried intact. In Rome, until the 5th century, Christian burial was prevailingly in niches in the subterranean passages in the volcanic material which underlay the city, passages whose prototypes were the galleries left by excavators of building materials. In these catacombs and upon some of the Christian sarcophagi, Christian scenes were often depicted, among them the Nativity and Jesus as the Good Shepherd. However, the catacomb as a burial place was not a Christian invention, for the Jews also employed it. Moreover, the Christian scenes normally used non-Christian art forms. Thus, at least some of the portrayals of the Good Shepherd are clearly modeled after pagan pictures in which Orpheus was the central figure. 
with some modifications, a representation of Jesus was substituted for that of Orpheus. Beginning with the age of Constantine and the full toleration of Christianity, large church edifices were erected, but these generally adopted existing architectural traditions, modifying them to meet the purposes of Christian worship. It was not until the 6th century that revolutionary forms of church architecture began to appear. I'll put in a link to our, the 17th video in our Genesis playlist, which is on Genesis chapter 1, how Genesis chapter 1 explodes pagan polytheism and pantheism and five other, uh, five other worldviews which are quite modern and even ancient worldviews that have been resurrected in recent decades, which the Christian world, so-called, thought were quite dead until recently. See you soon.